I think this is about the third or fourth video I have made so far about my historical building collections, kind of some videos to help those who are dealing with uh, working on older homes, repairs. You might not know what some part of the building is. Uh, you might be able to find it here. I am planning on making more videos on uh, this, but I just wanted to kind of give you an idea. This is uh, a page I took out of a book that was written in the late 1700s, early 1800s. And I would like to say uh, it give you a copyright date on the book, but uh, I have seen it uh, from the late 1700s to the early 1800s. So I will leave it at that. So I cannot tell by this picture. It's just a two-dimensional picture, and I'm going to create a three-dimensional drawing. But I cannot tell that uh, these beams, everything is flush here. You know, maybe this beam here is a 4 by 8 and these are 2 by 2s I mean, I really can't tell. So I just went ahead and drew an example of what I thought it would look like. And I, the main reason why I wanted to do this is to give you an idea of how we have changed our structural shear walls. You can see the bracing here and the way this is uh, braced. And this, I would imagine, is uh, basically mortise and tendon into here. Um, and if we go back to the picture, you can actually see where the drawing is showing it in here a little bit, but it's not showing it like there's a mortise or tenon in here or any type of uh, doweling uh, taking place. And the instructions weren't uh, very, uh, very good. And keep in mind that the book that I found is written to where even some of the words um, don't look. I think that uh, when the, they, they might use like the letter S uh, and it's supposed to be uh, Z or Z. It's just it's really confusing. You can figure it out if you look at it long enough. And maybe I will here eventually. So enough of that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the bracing here. Let's go ahead and spin around the wall here. And um, if you're wondering how the roof, how the roof rafters, the ceiling joists and stuff like that fit on here, I would only be guessing. But back then, the ceiling joists would have probably or the floor joists would have sat on top of this beam ceiling joists would have sat on top of this beam and maybe the roof rafters would have sat on top of this beam here. Um, I mean, if you think about it, this beam should have been raised up if the rafters were going to be sitting on top of this. Wouldn't have made much sense. So, and again, I'm just guessing there. Take a look at the bottom and that again, this is the way it was drawn out. And you can always go back and look at the picture at the beginning of the video, compare it to what we're looking at here. And of course, this would be notched into the bottom plate here, if that's what they're referring to it as. Another notch into the king post there. And then, of course, this bracing system looks like it would work. Now, I would imagine in order for this to work, this would somehow need to be securely um, fastened to this beam. And I would imagine that would have taken uh, some type of a mortise and tendon joint there. And of course, it could have always mortise and tendon this board here, brace into this here. But you can really see where something like this would work. And it just takes a lot of time. It would take a lot of time to do something like this. And this, I'm just guessing this is what this is. Uh, this seems like this would create a nice solid bracing system here as long as it was fastened to this. And if it was all... Um, dowled in, um, then this part could have been one secure building. Now, keep in mind, nails were expensive back then. So by drawing something like this, and then you're just assuming everyone's going to nail it together. That's just, that's an assumption I don't want to make in this video. Let's go ahead and pop one of these babies out here. This is, again, what I think it would look like. And you could see where if you built something like this, this would be difficult to move. It would be hard to um, push this board or this board in either direction once it's fastened securely with some type of a, a mortise and tendon. Another view of it there. And then let's go ahead and remove the brace so you can see how it would be notched into the beam here and then notched into the wall framing studs. 
And again, I don't know if this part right here would have been uh, mortised into here somehow. Would have made sense to create some type of a notch like this up here um, with something like this and, and not notch this at an angle. That kind of doesn't look like it would make a lot of sense. But again, I don't know what it would take to do something like this with the tools back then. Another view of the brace bottom. And then, of course, it would slide into here. Then top slot all around. And that is it for this video. So this could be one of the original shear walls. I can definitely see where you could get strength out of this. Um, this could this seems like it would be a really strong wall once it was put together. I just don't know. You know, you look at this and you look at today's framing and you could see where the they've came a long way and um, in my opinion, the, the plywood, the shear walls, all of that is uh, going to create a stronger wall. But uh, at least now you have an idea of what, what type, what they might have used uh, 200 years ago um, to brace off a wall and prevent it from moving.